I get a lot of questions asking me about painting disruptive paint pattern camouflage on Australian vehicles for Team Yankee. These are my Australian M113 armoured personnel carriers. They're the Battlefront plastic kit with the metal T-50 turrets for Australian forces in Team Yankee. In this video I'll tell you what colours I used to get this result. We'll also have a look at different Australian vehicle colour schemes from the 1950s onwards, as well as Aussie paint options from several hobby paint manufacturers. Stay with me! These are my M113 APCs for Team Yankee, one of the few Anzac units I've camouflage painted for the game. I'm not much of a painter. Many channels do that better than mine, but I wanted to cover Auscam. This question pops up a lot on Facebook, plus I wanted to have a quick look at the history of Australian camouflage. Using the Auscam camo scheme in the game is actually a bit of a liberty. Officially, in the original Team Yankee timeline of 1985, Australian vehicles would still have been painted in overall olive drab lustreless green. This colour was introduced as the Australian vehicle base colour in 1967, about the time Australian forces deployed to Vietnam. M113s were delivered and initially operated in the darker US Army olive drab. Vehicles were later repainted in the new Australian lustreless camouflage olive green during their service. I've painted these M113s in overall lustreless green to use for both Team Yankee and NAM. The colour I've used is Vallejo 70924 Russian Uniform. This base coat has been washed with Citadel Agrax Earthshade and heavily dry brushed with Vallejo 70819 Iraqi Sand. The dry brush tones the base colour down a bit and highlights the edges giving a worn and dusty look. Australian military vehicles maintained this overall green colour scheme until the late 1980s. Centurion tanks were initially painted in British standard colour BS381C224, deep bronze green. Gloss deep bronze green was the standard post-war British MOD military vehicle colour through the 1950s. Australia adopted it as well. However, the new Australian olive drab colour was considered more suitable for service in the jungle terrain of Vietnam. Tanks were quickly repainted in this colour in theatre. These are my Leopard AS1s for Team Yankee. They're also painted in an Australian overall lustreless olive drab scheme using Vallejo Russian uniform. They use the same wash and dry brush technique as the APCs. Leopard AS1s have the welded turret rather than the cast turret. Australia ordered 90 gun tanks as well as bridge layers and armoured recovery vehicles, with the first tanks arriving in 1976. Leopards were originally delivered and operated in German yellow olive. This is colour RAL6014, the base colour for Bundeswehr vehicles in the 1970s. This was an infrared defeating paint scheme, so Leopard AS1s continued to support this finish until the mid-1980s. At that time, Australian Leopard tanks entered a rebuild program. As part of this, they all received the overall lustreless green scheme. This means they would all have been in Auscam green by the Team Yankee timeline. But overall green, while easy to paint, is a bit dull. The modern Australian three-colour disruptive paint pattern camouflage was introduced in the late 1980s, after experiments with a number of interim schemes. These are the only images I was able to find of the interim schemes. One is clearly influenced by American MERDC patterns, while the very poor image bottom left shows a tiger stripe pattern, and there's even a digital pattern here. A link to the original source for these is included in the description. But none of these schemes were adopted. The ADF decided to adopt a three-colour disruptive paint pattern scheme of green, tan and black, dubbed Auscam. Here are a troop of M113 APCs for my Team Yankee Force, painted in Australian DPP Auscam. The base colour remains lustreless olive drab, overpainted with large patches of camouflage brown, FS30219, and camouflage black, FS37038. I've matched these by eye in the Vallejo range, and I've used Vallejo model colour 70819 Russian uniform for the green, Vallejo model air 71122 US desert armour for camouflage brown, and model colour 70862 black grey for camouflage black. 
This is the base Vallejo colours painted on the models before washing and dry brushing. The Model Air tan colour is thin for airbrushing, so I needed a couple of coats to get good coverage with a brush. The camouflage pattern was painted to match the patterns on reference images. Here's the same vehicles after washing and dry brushing. The washers darkened both the green and the tan, and the dry brushes highlighted the edges and tied the colours together. In all, I'm pretty happy with it. It seems a good visual match for Australian 3 colour camouflage in 15mm. So to recap the Vallejo colours, that's 70824 Russian Uniform for Camouflage Green, 71122 US Desert Armour for Camouflage Tan, and 70862 Black Grey for Camouflage Black, with 70819 Iraqi Sand as a dry brush. Vehicles in the Pilbara region of WA have an additional colour, a red-brown to match the red iron or dirt of the northwest in Western Australia. The best match for this is 70982 Cavalry Red, or if you think that's a bit too red, try either 71271 German Red Brown, or even 70940 Saddle Brown. From the examples I've found, the Pilbara Brown replaces the black in the three-colour scheme. But Vallejo isn't your only paint option. Several hobby paint companies make specific Auscam paint sets. SMS Scale Modelers Supply are an Australian manufacturer that have a couple of Auscam options in their range. They have an acrylic lacquer paint set 02A, which has 30ml bottles of camo green, camo brown, camo black and seafoam green. Seafoam green is the interior colour for many Australian AFVs, so useful for 135th scale modelers but less useful for smaller wargaming scales. Their range also includes a Pilbara colour that doesn't look red enough to my eye, as well as CARC Middlestone for the delivery colour of the M1 Abrams, and German RAL6014 Yellow Olive for the Leopard tanks. I haven't used SMS paint, so I have no recommendation to give, but it's nice to have an Australian manufacturer selling a range of Australian colours specifically matched for Auscam. SMS also do Auscam colours in their infinite colour range. These are acrylic resin urethane paints. This range has Auscam green, brown and black, either individually in 20ml dropper bottles or all three as a set. Another option is AK Interactive. AK Interactive is a Spanish company that's fairly well known in modelling circles. They have an Auscam set in their 3G AFE range, AK11649. This box set has camouflage green, brown and black in 17ml dropper bottles. Again, I haven't used these so I have no meaningful recommendation to make. Their paint range also includes interior AFV green and yellow olive as individual colours. The final option with an Auscam paint range that I could find was Hataka. Hataka are a Polish manufacturer that has two Auscam sets, one in their red line range and one in their orange line. The orange line are lacquer based paints while their red line are water based acrylics. Both paints are formulated for airbrushing. The red line set has eight colours, including deep bronze green for 1950s vehicles, yellow olive for early leopards, as well as the four Auscam disruptive pattern colours. It also has sand and seafoam green for interiors. These are all in 17ml dropper bottles. This set has Australian vehicles covered from the 1950s to the present day. So those are your options. Some Vallejo paints I've roughly matched by eye that work okay for me, plus several specific Auscam sets from three different paint manufacturers. To be honest, I was surprised how many Auscam sets were available once I started researching this video. I'll probably stick with the Vallejo colours to match my existing vehicles. This is close enough for working in 15mm with scale effect and weathering, but the specific paint sets are tempting. Very tempting. I'm not a great painter. Maybe I can convince Christian from the Painting Panzers channel to try one of these. Which one would interest you most if I can twist Christian's arm? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.